thousand and seven, the mobile phone giant Nokia was in its prime, but just three years later, it was in peril. Uh, so there was a vacuum at the top. There was no longer the ability to set strategic direction. They were relying on a, an operating system called Symbian. In less than a decade, Nokia grew from Finland to world's leading telecommunication company. It grew to have world's one of the most recognizable and leading brand in the world. At its height, Nokia commanded over 40% of the market share of mobile phone sales. While its journey to the top was swift, its decline was equally so, culminating in the sale of its mobile phone business to Microsoft in 2013. With a young, united and energetic leadership team at helm, Nokia's early success was primarily a result of visionary and courageous management choices that leveraged the firm's innovative technologies as digitalization and deregulation of telecom networks quickly spread across the globe. But in mid-1990s, the near collapse of its supply chain meant Nokia was on verge of being a victim of its success. In response, disciplined systems and processes were put in place, which enabled Nokia to become extremely efficient and further scale up production and sales much faster than its competitors. Between 1996 and 2000, the headcount at Nokia mobile phones increased 150% to 27,353, while the revenues over the period were up 503%. This rapid growth came at a cost, and that cost was that managers at Nokia's main development centers found themselves under ever-increasing short-term performance pressure and were unable to dedicate time and resources to innovation. While the core business focused on incremental improvement, Nokia's relatively small data group took up the innovation mantle. In 1996, it launched the world's first smartphone, the Communicator, and was also responsible for Nokia's first camera phone in 2001. The biggest mistake of Nokia was that it did not understand the value of smartphones in time. It had highly invested in its Symbian operating system and wanted to make it work. They released Windows operating system to compete with Android and iPhone operating system but they were too late for that. They did not even go to Android till it was even more late. Here are other major factors that led Nokia to lose everything. More often than not, why business fail is because they refuse to play by the market rules. They overestimate their brand and do not change at all. In Nokia's case, the brand was too late to step up the smartphone game. They refused to change its hardware designs and thought it could catch up with iPhone superiority. That was the beginning of the end. Nokia did not embrace Windows Phone, even though Windows failed. Nokia failed more miserable. With an unintuitive and clunky operating system, it failed as a brand complete. The brand failed to realize that in the era of high technological innovations, any companies that fall behind fail. Take for instance, in 2007 when iPhone was launched, Nokia was still boastful of its e-series. What the brand did not realize is that smartphones at this time were already changing. Samsung adapted to the change more cleverly with its off-the-shelf technology. In other words, Nokia failed to look at the future with innovative eyes. In Nokia history, another famous failure came with the Nokia-Microsoft deal. Symbian technology dominated Nokia's creation for longest time until it entered a partnership with Microsoft. And then, it did not make a move to Windows quickly. By the time it understood the importance of changing its operating system, it was too late. By this time, Android and iOS had already bought everything that market needed. Here's what went really wrong. In 2002, Nokia launched its Symbian 60 series, which did well until 2008. Apple and Android took over quickly. Symbian operating system was lax in many areas. It did not have enough applications and Nokia failed at improving its UI. No
Nokia failed to create a strong umbrella branding. Look at how Apple positioned itself as a phone brand. They used iPhone as the umbrella, subsequently launching all models under that. Samsung was a quick learner and adopted the same concept in its Galaxy S series. Nokia started something similar with M series but failed to pay on the umbrella concept. For instance, Apple has a set month each year to launch its new model under the iPhone series. The brand works around it each year, creating a buzz in the market and triggering consumer anticipation. Nokia's umbrella branding was an utter failure. If you look at the numbers in 2009 before Nokia turned into a corporate failure, it had a clear market leadership at 38.6%. It all changed in 2014 when it ended. Samsung was cashing in on the lost market by raising its market share from a mere 3.3% to whooping 23%. The rest, as they say, is history. This failure story has also one common thing. So here's what really happened. Nokia was selling phones in millions. The brand controlled supply chains and was calling the shot all its deals with carriers. At the time, Apple was designing iPhone and Nokia was already in control of whooping share of market. Google company CEO announced the Open Handset Alliance calling the industry players to come together and build an open source system. This operating system would be available all smartphones. But the question is, did Nokia join? Of course not. It refused and numbers came crumbling down for Nokia within just two years. With the market share at within two years of these events, Nokia was already in crisis. The management team at Nokia failed to see how software is taking precedence over hardware. The idea was to adopt the changing environment. The importance of applications-led ecosystem was growing. Nokia did not have skills to step up with the time. They did not even show the inclination to work towards it. Apple and Google make devices powerful. They advertise their products with simple concepts like desktop class architecture. They create stuff that can handle all of your work on a phone, from HD videos to 3D games and everything. This is what Nokia and even BlackBerry for that matter failed at. According to Wall Street Journal, Nokia's R&D expenses were close to shocking dollar US 40 billion. These research efforts never saw the light of the day. Internal rivalries between strategy teams and research made this difficult. Many started wondering what will happen if the company closed down. Because Nokia was not only failing in innovation, but it started relying on strategy of low-end markets such as Asian markets. They thought that the company could easily secure a strong database by just catering to millions of customers with affordable handset without going into smartphone dish. But it was unable to compete with low-end phones as China was already producing really cheap phones for Asian markets and innovating it over the years. Meanwhile, other players were tied up with Google and were working on operating systems that solved many things, Android and iOS. This was probably the biggest mistake that Nokia made. In 2009, Nokia launched its own apps and content store called OVI. This was not even close to experience that Apple was created. To add to the mess, Nokia launched it in 35 countries at the same time. This was a complete disaster. A lot of leadership changes and roles poorly implemented in 2004 led to a reorganization of company they changed into a matrix structure, with important members leaving the executive team. This came at the time when Nokia was not ready for changes on the strategy front. This new way of working did not go well with Nokia's team, which were used to decentralized initiatives. Even as Nokia tried to hitch a ride with Microsoft, it failed. Failed businesses have so much to teach, slow in upgrading its smartphone features, not taking the market too seriously, and above all, not offering people what they need. Nokia failed at many ends. In 2013, Nokia got sold to Microsoft and its name was changed. Later, Microsoft sold it as well and one time giant was buried forever. But then something amazing happened and the top executives of dead Nokia would sit together and decide to reintroduce Nokia brand to the market. From there on, Nokia is again growing at a slow pace and is trying to keep up with the ever-changing market of smartphones. The biggest advantage to their side is that world young generation has Nokia as a brand embedded in their minds, a memory from their childhood. They can definitely exploit this factor to their advantage. If you like the content, then subscribe now and hit bell notification button to get the content as soon as it is published. Peace and stay safe friends. Thank you.